The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Peace TV Network, the solution for humanity. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Wahtahu la sharika lah Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir Wa ashadu anna muhammadan Abdullahi wa rasul Allahumma salli wa sallim wa baraka Ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Dear brothers and sisters Welcome to another episode of Defense Against Disaster and Escape al-Rumani And I hope that you are following with the previous episode. As I said before, take notes. Try to benefit from this. Tell other people to watch it. Share it on your social media. Let as many people know. Let as many people be trained and learn how to defend their faith against those who try to remove it from you. Those who try to come, really, wolf in the clothes of sheep who want to confuse you I want to remove the light of Islam from your heart. In the previous episode, we were talking about the accusation that women are in fear to men. And we said that we do not sugarcoat these things. Okay, we do not sugarcoat our answers. SubhanAllah, we do not want to be accused of academic dishonesty. Yes, we have our scholars. But if you look into the ulama of the past, those giants who have come, their explanations, their commentaries, and then we try to change, and we try to sugarcoat things, and we try to present it to the public in hope that they will accept this, this is the wrong attitude, okay? You say things the way they are, look at the hikmah, look at the proper explanation from the scholars, and you don't mold Islam according to you, or according to the pressures from society, but you mold yourself according to Islam. That is why it's called submission to achieve peace. Islam is you submit your nafs, your soul, 
You submit your desires, you submit your intellect to achieve peace, to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who knows. He's proven to you that this is the haqq. He has proven it to you. It's not that we're asking you to close your eyes and just walk towards the, you know, the Grand Canyon and cross it, jump. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْأَفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ Allah says, we'll show them the ayat, the signs, the evidences in the horizons. Everywhere you look. Around you. In nature. In the universe. And in themselves. The way they're created. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the development of the human being. 1400 plus years ago when people could not don't bring me you know the greek understanding of the development of the human embryo because you probably didn't read it properly the homunculus that they used to believe in and all the other theories to say that the muslims took it from the greeks read it properly and see that they might have gotten one or two or three things right but the other things are just speculations. Islam, the Quran, described it in such a way that it was correct then, it will be correct today, and it will still be correct a thousand years from now. And Allah knows best how long this earth will last. Without any mistake, clear evidences so that the hearts of the believers are firm. But then when you've established that this is the truth, to question and to doubt and to go against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, this is nonsense. It is irrational. It is illogical. And that is why we say, don't sugarcoat. Stand strong for what you believe. People disagree with you, but at least they will respect you that you're not some flip-flop type of person. Obviously, the issue of women and their status in society are, is an issue, a very sensitive issue. They are our twin halves. They are the mother of our children. They are mothers. They are our wives. They are our sisters. Islam came to liberate women. To liberate women from the shackles of ignorance. When people though say that women need to be liberated, what they mean actually when you ask them to define that, they say or they mean that we want women to do whatever they want. Islam did not come to allow women to do whatever they want. Allah did not create women to do whatever they want. Just like He didn't create men to do whatever they want. Something very important. Islam did not come to liberate women to be loose, to do whatever they want, to dress however they feel like it, to go wherever they want. There are rules and regulations. Like everything in life. Can you, brother or sister, drive on the highway past the speed limit without being penalized? Oh, see, there's a system. Can you go to school whatever time you feel like it? No, because you'll be penalized. Because there's a system. Can you go to work and do whatever you want? No, because there's a system. And you will be punished. Like that, everything in life. As a system, there's a reward, there's punishment, there are things that are required from you, you are given responsibilities, you're also given authority, you are given benefits in everything. But you see, when it comes to Islam, people are always questioning. Why? Why? Oh, I don't agree with it. Man, you just came from a system that limits you, and then you have issues with Islam limiting you, or focusing you, or directing you. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense for those... Christian, Jews, Hindus, social humans, whatever you are, atheist, agnostic, people are raising these doubts and allegations and misconceptions towards Islam. So we respond that, look, you have double standard. Look around you in your life and you'll find that you have to abide by rules. The question goes back again that, look, this is the empty slate of life. The world, the culture, the accepted norms. The question is, who is going to put their system in? It's always been like that. 
from the beginning of time till the end of time, it will be like that. Who's going to succeed in putting this? So if it's not Islam, it will be something else. Why that? Why not this? See, then people have issues. The hypocrisy and double standards of people are very obvious. Again, when people attack Islam, and sadly Muslims will go on the defensive, and they say, well, it's not like that, it's not like this. See, because you don't, we don't have the guts to stand strong and say, no, this is Islam. And this is what we should do. And that Islam will liberate the world from what? From the shackles of materialism, of being enslaved to desires, of being enslaved to technology and so on. Islam is not saying that technology is bad. It's good. It's for your own benefit. But see, we're enslaved to it today. You can't spend five minutes without your phone. Your fingers start twitching. You feel like your phone is ringing in your pocket, which shows that you're addicted. Everything, everything has to do with, you know, we're addicted. Because we don't, we cannot, we don't spread our day and we don't arrange our day according to something spiritual. Islam came to liberate you, but not to make you loose, as we said. So that is why we have to stand strong and not be scared. Because if not, then someone will put their system in. If it's not you, the Muslims, it will be the atheists. Look why not. Atheism is on the rise. It's not that people convert now to other religions. Atheism. Hindus are becoming atheists. Christians are becoming atheists. Jewish are becoming atheists. Muslims are becoming atheists. Buddhists are becoming atheists. Everyone. Because they're doing their dawah. If we're not doing their, our dawah, if we're leaving the plate empty, someone else will put his hand in there or her hand in there. So it's about, it's a really, in the end, it is a competition. Who's going to get their plate full? their product on the plate. They say Islam wants world domination. Okay, so if it's not Islam, then it's something else in the end of the day. So, you know, the Muslim can say, but you want world domination. No, who, when did I say that? Because you want your understanding and your philosophy to dominate. And Mike wants his philosophy and Bob wants his. And whoever else wants their own. That is why Islam is submitting your will all those philosophies and ideas to the will of the Creator. The only time humanity will be united will be under that banner, where God is the one who knows best. We're talking again of the sensitive issue of women. And we said that we do not sugarcoat things. I wanted to cite two things, one hadith and one ayah, that show that Islam does not treat women in fear. Simple, I don't need to go into too much detail. The first hadith in Tirmidhi, Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Assuredly, women are the twin halves of men. Simple. Women are part of the men. I told you also that Jannah, paradise, at the feet of the mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a high rank. So, this is a clear refutation. The ayah. Fairly the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Surah 49, verse 13 in the Quran. The ones who are the closest to Allah. It's not about, it didn't say that men are the closest or the women or this or that. One who have the most taqwa will be the one who will be closer to Allah. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back to continue with this important topic. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way 
that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Before the break, we're talking about hadith of the Prophet showing that women are the twin halves of men. And then we talked about the ayah. Surah 49, verse 13, Verily the most honored of you in the sight of Allah are the most righteous. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are the same. Men were given authority over women. They are stronger than women. They have more responsibility than women. And they'll be held accountable for that responsibility by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not some kind of, you know, preference. This is responsibility. Let us move now to another issue with regards to women again. And that is the issue of wife beating in Islam. The accusation is that Muslims beat their wives as if it's some kind of monopoly. But, you know, the proper accusation is that there's domestic violence, you know. You love these terms that they use. Domestic violence is known also as domestic abuse or spousal abuse, family violence. Intimate partner bias, IPV, can be broadly defined as a pattern of abusive behavior by one or both partners in an intimate relationship. Okay, so it's a wide definition. Why are we defining it? Because we need to understand the definition before we can say if we can project it on Islam or on the status of men in Islam. So again, it is known as domestic abuse, it's a pattern of abusive uh, behaviors by one or both partners. So even wives can abuse the husband in an intimate relation. So the question is, does the Quran allow wife beating? So remember, the accusation is beating, like a boxing match, like someone beat you up. And the right answer is that no, not the beating. However, again, we don't sugarcoat things. Okay, we have to understand things from the proper understanding. Because we don't want someone to get more confused. And they'll go, you know, the missionaries and the people who are attacking Islam, they know exactly where to go. They know exactly what to show you. And then if I'm telling you something different, they'll say, aha, see, not that he only lie, but he is also, you know, academically dishonest. He's trying to give you a wrong answer. What else is he trying to hide from you? And then doubts will start coming into the hearts. No. But... Beating, as a proper beating, as taking you for a boxing match or a good, you know, beating, then no. Abuse, domestic violence as we define it right now, no. Okay? No. Islam does not allow that. As we have just defined it, does it allow for abusive behavior which is perpetrated? There's a pattern. Again, the definition is a pattern. It happens once, twice, three times over a day, twice three times a day, sometimes every day of the week, often repeated, right away, no warning. Does Islam allow that? No. So then we rest our case, call us. The accusation doesn't need to be discussed anymore, right? See, no. People will try to keep going and going and going and going around. So let us actually dissect it and tackle it properly. They will refer to Surah 4, verse 34. This is their, their favorite one. Right, they'll say, ah, see, Quran talks about this. Islam allows that. All right. The verse says, therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient and guard their chastity in their husband's absence, what Allah would have them guard, which is their chastity. As to those women on whose part you fear disloyalty and ill conduct, meaning you know that they have ill conduct, they're disloyal, meaning they, what? They, they are not chaste that they're causing problems, they're causing sins, 
they're corrupting society. It's not that they're just like, mm. you know, it's not what you want. You didn't expect, you know, the prettiest woman and you got something that's not so, and maybe her character is a little bit, you know, annoying and you start taking her for a, a match. No, that's not what Islam says. They do not guard their chastity. They're causing problems. They're causing fitna in society. They're not taking care of their family. They're disrespecting. They are abusing the children. They're not taking care of the children. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. Allah says, admonish them first. So they're given a first step. Admonish them. Talk to them. Tell them to fear Allah. Bring them back to Islam. Rationalize them. Reason with them. Next, refuse to share their beds. You're not allowed to, what? Sleep with them. So Allah says, and then hit them. Okay, not beat them, not abuse them. That's the third step that you're allowed to. Okay, do that. A lot of people now say, oh, look at this, Islam. Da, da, da. This is people who have no intellect and do not want to think because they're thinking that it's some kind of abuse. It's some kind. Of, the husband is responsible. Look at today's society, 21st century. A man cannot touch his child anymore. Allah does not allow a father to scold his child. They'll be like, oh, yeah, but that's a child. Okay, what about me? I'm over 30 years old. If my father decides to give me one, I should go to the police or something like that? He's my father. He has authority over it. Okay, what about my mother? <laughs> Same thing. A woman is beating me. A woman is slapping me. He's giving me a slap on the head. What about that? She doesn't have the authority to do that? Because she's an authority over me. She's my mother. Should I say the women are abusing men now? See, but the way media has brainwashed us, that now, subhanAllah, the child will beat his father. The child will beat the mother. That's what happened. Because we have lost the sense of culture, identity, morality, and religious obligation. The respect that we have for each other. Authority in the family. Anyone can do whatever they want. And then you have the apologetics who come in and say, no, it's not like that. It's not really the way it is. No, Islam does not allow you to even touch a finger. Not your children. See, let's understand. Let's open our minds. Let us be intellectual. Let us go past emotions. Let us go past on the pressures from culture to make us change. This is not an issue only of Islam. This is an issue of all religions. All cultures. Look around. The father used to be the leader of the house. Parents used to have a certain position in the family, elders. But now, no. Everyone thinks they can do whatever they want. Because this kind of mentality infiltrated into society and made people doubt themselves, doubt their role, made them doubt each other. And that's why it's the same thing. Don't give me that, oh, it's a different story if a parent hits his child. It's the same thing. It's who is in charge. It's about authority. It's about responsibility. It's about if it's justified. We will talk about that in a minute. Let us continue with the ayah. And hit them lightly. But if they turn to obedience, they've rectified themselves. Pay attention first. They were doing something wrong. Like a child. A child was doing something wrong. The father or the mother will hit them. Okay, if you have an issue of age, even an older person, 30, 40 year old, if he does something that displeases his mother or father, maybe his mother or father will slap him. Is that abuse? Does that take the right away? No, it's no, not an issue in age anymore. It's again the issue of the position, responsibility, accountability, and authority of that person. Number one, they have to do something wrong, the person who gets it. Be it the wife, be it the son, be it whatever. Number two, it has to be with responsibility. But if they turn to obedience, seek not against them means of annoyance. If they obey, you don't keep doing it. You don't abuse. Going back to the definition, right? That it's done over time, time, okay, again. You don't do that. There's no issue of abuse here. For Allah is most high and great above all. Okay, this is Surah 4, 34. A lot of people have issues with this. SubhanAllah, look at the mercy of Allah SWT. Again, let me give you an example. If a wife is using drugs okay or something she's being unchaste anything like that so the husband will talk to her nicely will advise her 
don't do this. My wife, my love, my honey, my darling. Take care. You have responsibility towards the children, towards me. If she stops, she stops. The scholars say this takes time. It's not like, okay, honey, stop. No. Talk, you know, you keep advising her over and over again. Maybe you, you, you know, you try to seek some kind of, you know, give her proofs and so on. You don't want to go outside because you don't want to embarrass her and expose her. You want to cover her sin and her mistake. You don't want everyone, subhanAllah, kind of imagine the whole community finds out. Where is her honor, her dignity? Maybe it was a mistake. See, Islam has mercy, has wisdom. Next, you have to separate the bed. You cannot sleep with her. It's not like you will sleep with her and then you hit her. No. See, if you do not follow the steps, you are actually doing dhulm. You are actually disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't jump the steps. That is why this is very important. Anyway, we ran out of time. I hope that you're hooked on this because it's so important. We're not sure recording anything. We're giving you as it is. I hope that you're understanding it. Inshallah, make sure you follow in the next episode. We will continue. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.